Good afternoon, um, everybody. Uh, I'm Mark Nundle, Police Crime Commissioner. And the idea of how this is going to work is each of us is going to talk for two minutes about a subject uh, in relation to mental health. Um, and then we're opening up to the floor for about half an hour for uh, questions. Uh, we've got some very notable people in the audience who've probably got some really good questions for us. Uh, and I know and Andy has some questions that people have sent in as well. So that's how it's going to work. I will be the first speaker. Can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. So I'm going to be talking about the street triage pilot, something I'm passionate about. Uh, then next to me is Stan, and he's going to be talking about the uh, National Liaison and Diversion Scheme, which is designed to divert people from criminalisation uh, if they have a mental health issue. Uh, and then Andy is going to be talking about mental health awareness training that we do jointly between the university and the police and the trust. Uh, and then um, I'll keep you all in suspense with Simon. He's just going to talk about it means. Um, and we'll see how that lands. Right, my two minutes starts. What is street triage? Street triage, uh, I helped pump prime street triage in Dorset. I, I represent uh, PCCs nationally for mental health. I work with the Home Secretary and I worked a lot with Norman Lamb to improve outcomes for people with mental health. And what was very clear very quickly when I got elected as the Police Crime Commissioner was that police were spending 20% of their time dealing with mental health issues. Arguably, most of that time wasn't police-related business, it was other agency business. Uh, and in a shrinking environment, when uh, I as Police Crime Commissioner have lost 20% of my funding, I needed to make those outcomes more health-based, not police-based. And of course, what we found from that was that people who were getting in contact with the police because the other agencies <coughs> were shrinking, uh, people were going into police cells instead of into a health-based setting when they're in crisis. Uh, and never forget, if you're in crisis, that doesn't make you a criminal. Um, if you're in crisis, you should be in a health-based setting. Um, if you break your arm, you end up inside a hospital A&E. If you break your mind, you should end up in a health-based <laughs> setting. To put someone inside a police station is outrageous. And I've said that many, many times. And so I approached the CCG, Dorset Healthcare, and Dorset Police, and I put money on the table and said, let's find a solution. And the solution is street triage. We have, there are several types of street triage, which I'll talk about if, in the question and answers if you want me to, but what works in Dorset, because you can't have a one-size-fits-all, is two different angles. The first is a mental health professional available to police um, when they come across someone in crisis. That advice helps the officers decide whether they should uh, go further or whether they shouldn't. The second bit we do, which I think is more impactful, is we have a mental health professional inside the police control room. That person is scanning police logs, looking for a mental health related issue, and then identifying it and helping the officers. And just as importantly, that mental health professional has access to care plans. Anyone with a mental health illness has a care plan. That care plan will help us tailor services to that person rather than putting them inside a police cell. Um, and as you'll see in a graph that's on there at the moment, the blue are police. Uh, sorry, the blue are health-based settings for people in crisis, the red are police-based. So if you look on the left of that graph, you'll see that um, in 2012-13, uh, we started this in June 14, there were a lot of people going into police cells. And you'll see it's tailoring straight down until July this year, we hit zero for the first time in Dorset. Fantastic news. That's my two minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. I'm probably going to need my long vision lenses to read the slides, so I'll, I'll base it on memory. Um, I'm the service manager for the Criminal Justice Liaison and Diversion Service. Now, street triage is a little bit self-explanatory, sort of, but liaison and diversion means a whole lot of things to different people. Uh, essentially, liaison and diversion is a triage function operating in police custody, magistrates, youth justice, and non-custodial settings. And in 2014, uh, Dorset was successful in our application to join a national trial of, impl uh, of the implementation of an NHS organised uh, scheme that's rolled out nationally. Uh, and in 2014, 10 sites uh, were announced. 2015, a further 10 sites were announced. There's 50% of the country now covered with a liaison and diversion triage assessment function. Okay, now me, I was, um, Andy Mayers, um, a senior lecturer in psychology here at Bottoms University, and it was in that role that I was first approached by um, Stan and his team to do some evaluation work on the triage work that was being done. 
And putting my other hat on as a mental health campaigner nationally, it became very clear to me that this was something absolutely fundamentally essential. So I started getting more involved in a promotion and awareness role with my social media presence and so forth. And then as an educator, we thought, okay, <coughs> let's start looking at uh, mental health training for the police. Now we do this in a number of ways. Uh, between uh, myself and Stan, we have been um, going to uh, Dorset Police Headquarters in Winfrith, training the, the officers down there, but also um, support teams like the PCSOs and so forth. Um, but talking about what is mental health, what is mental illness, talking about basic diagnoses, but also about what to do, how we can spot those signs, what we, how we might be able to recognise that someone's in crisis, what other things we can do. So that's important. But also, I think, is very crucial. I mean, let's not forget, police, along with the ambulance and the fire service, they're first responders. The things they see, most of us simply would not like to see. And we need to look after their mental health too. So we need to be able to look at ways in which we can train them about not just taking care of their own mental health, but how they can look out for their fellow officers mental health too. Now this is an ongoing process, so we've been reflecting on what we've been doing so far and that's worked pretty well up until, uh, up until now and I'm sure it would continue to do so. But we, having had discussions recently, we now want to add another element to that, to our trainers. We want to now bring on board people with lived experience to help us with that training. Now, using someone with lived experience of mental health problems, that is a very powerful thing in its own right. So that's what we want to do. But we think it's even more important that we bring on board people with that lived experience, but also experience of 135, 136, um, and perhaps attending a police cell, to show what their experience was, how they felt. So th this is ongoing, and we'll certainly welcome questions about that later on. Can I just come in on that? Sorry. Um, a lot of people in the audience might not know what 135, 136 is. So the law uh, allows someone, 135 is in a private dwelling, 136 is in a public space, allows the police to take someone in for mental health assessment. We talk about it flippantly, but a lot of people won't know that expression. So 135 is in a house, 136 is in a public space. Thank you, Martin. Simon. Thank you. Um, as you can tell by my slide, I'm the non-academic. Um, I've just got two words. It means... So what does it mean to us? Well, it means to police, um, operational police officers that um, we are now in a position with our partners and victim support, Dorset Mental Health Forum, to deliver training to victims of crime who've got mental health issues and make them safe, uh, take safe. It means at 10 to 2 this morning, when there was an officer in the middle of deepest, darkest Dorset dealing with somebody who was in mental health crisis and threatening suicide, that officer had one of Stan's team on the end of a phone and was able to give them advice and make sure that the care plan was being enacted and that we dealt with that person in the most appropriate, sensitive manner. It means that if you are brought into custody, hopefully you're not, um, you will be seen by a mental health practitioner on a Stan's team if there's an issue. In the past, we've had to phone up, wait for a doctor, and your length in custody is prolonged. Now we have instant access. It also means that we have... 100% screening of anybody under the age of 18, 17 that's brought into custody. So youths and vulnerable people are, are catered for. Um, it means the world to us as operational police officers to have somebody who is medically trained on the end of a phone helping us to deal with something that is not really a policing issue, it's a healthing issue. And so that's what it means to me. I'll tell you what else it means to me, if I may have the last slide, is this. This is a blogger lifted straight from Mental Health Cop. Um, I, I won't bother reading it out because I've got Stan's glasses with me. So, <laughs> but all right for Stan. It's, this is a service user. I've never committed a crime, yet I've lost count of the hours spent in cells and cages of police vans or service argued about where I should be detained for my safety. I agree completely with not blaming individuals in the system, even those who get so burnt out and frustrated that I suggest I just get on with it, commit suicide. I see them as feeling pretty powerless in a system where they cannot help others or themselves. System level and cultural changes are tough, but they need to be taken off the too difficult to do list and dealt with. I think that kind of says it all. And the people that sat here, some other partners that can't be here today, we've picked that challenge up and we're going to run with it. 
and we're going to hope that that is a never event in Dorset. If not, then minimise it by making sure they get the right, pe right treatment at the right time. Thank you.